This is Bill Carroll from Zenny 62 Sports Media. And I'm wrapping up uh, the recently played <coughs> game, obviously the HBCU Legacy Bowl, and uh, Team Gaither, which I'll be honest, I thought it was a team that had slightly less talent, but Team Gaither prevailed 22-6 over Team Robinson, obviously both teams named for legendary coaches in the history of black college football. Jake was Nate Gaither at Florida A&M, and the legendary Eddie Robinson at Grambling. And there were many legends there in person. Uh, got to see Mel Blunt, which is a great moment for me, having grown up a big sort of Steeler fan. Uh, there, obviously, was Patrick Mahomes, James Shaq Harris, who's one of the co-founders of the event, and, you know, one of the people that helped the Black College Hall of Fame to even come into being, and Doug Williams, uh, who, once again, a historical figure uh, who, of whom... There can be no doubt about his importance in the history of football. Uh, then, just to get into some of the plays and players, uh, there was not any dominant offensive player, but there are several offensive players that made important, impactful plays on offense. And they were not the players I was expecting, to be perfectly honest. <clears throat> Bryce Witt of Chuan uh, actually had a much better game than I was expecting. He was up and down throughout the practice week, but really showed up for the game itself. And Puma Pass, the Louisville transfer who found his way here also uh, to the HBCU level, showed up and had a very good game, running mostly, but had threw a couple of good passes. Aquila Glass for Team Robinson, who was the most well-known quarterback prospect here, you know, once again connected with Dee Anderson a few times, had a, had a few passes, but just ever seemed a little bit off the whole game. Uh, even, you know, at some point points had a lot of low snaps. There were just things to deal with, and he didn't have the game I was expecting. Uh, running backs, like I said, Ezra Gray uh, showed he could catch the ball, moves fairly well. A couple of good runs from Jamain Martin, who showed toughness, showed the ability to, to fall forward consistently, and caught the ball fairly well also. And the wide receivers... Uh, D. Anderson made some plays. Uh, also, you know, my favorite, Shamar Bridges, made a couple of plays. But there weren't a lot of deep shots, and the few deep shots that were attempted were very often uh, broken up or well defended by defensive backs. It's a good defensive back group, and in fact, the MVP, uh, Antoine Collier, right, a, a other transfer from UCF. You know, when he transfers down, he then, with Marquise Bell at Florida A&M, becomes what has to be the best and one of the best over the past few years, safety tandems in all of black college football. Uh, but both teams were uneven at various points. There were a couple of fumbles, including one deep in the red zone that almost certainly would have bolted in a score if uh, it had not, like I said, been a fumble there. I believe that the event itself and the level of play will continue to raise itself over time. And I have some other video I'll be posting, including a couple of uh, brief conversations I have with people who were here, including one name that you will truly know, uh, both from his, maybe his days as a player, but mostly as his days as an analyst. So that will be posted very soon as well. And once again, uh, this has been a great event. If you get the opportunity to come to New Orleans, which of course is a good thing all by itself, but to see the HBCU Legacy Bowl that is in association with the Black College Hall of Fame, which you should also visit if you get the chance. This is Bill Carroll, once again, for Zinni 62 Sports Media. Until the next event.